Dr. Cote, tell us about the Office of Orphan Products Development. Sure. The Office of Orphan Products Development is uh, the home at FDA for people with rare diseases and for people who want to make therapies for people with rare diseases. It was established by the 1983 Orphan Drug Act, which was the brainchild of a woman by the name of Abby Meyer. She was a housewife from Danbury, Connecticut, and turned into a grassroots political mover. She founded an organization called NORD, the National Organization for Rare Disorders, which uh, exists today and is doing great work along with other uh, patient advocacy groups. Uh, she basically had a couple of kids who couldn't get drugs developed for their rare disease uh, because it didn't make sense for the drug company. You know, the model is a drug company sells pills and the number of people who buy the pills determine how much, how they recoup their development costs. Well, that doesn't work for rare diseases because there aren't enough people to buy the pills. So, uh, but there the are a lot of rare diseases. There are a lot of rare diseases. There's like 7,000 of them. And uh, they account for about 30 million Americans. So individually, they're infrequent. But collectively, they're very common. It's a major public health problem, these rare diseases. So what does your office do? So my office implements the Orphan Drug Act, which is a means by which new therapies for people with rare diseases can get special incentives. And so we decide whether or not um, a claim that this is a new therapy for a person with rare diseases is valid or whether somebody's trying to scam the system. Uh, and there have been a tremendous number of new therapies that have come forward. You know, in the days before Abby uh, got the Orphan Drug Act passed, very few uh, rare diseases had, had therapies. Uh, since that time, since 1983, 357 uh, new therapies have gone to full marketing approval. And we've had a total of 2,100 uh, compounds that are promising that have been labeled as orphan drugs. That's what we do. We find orphan drugs and we certify them as that. And give us some examples of orphan diseases. Sure. Well, you know, they're all over the spectrum. There are a bunch of different things that you might not imagine. They go from things that a lot of doctors have never heard of, um, and certainly that a lot of doctors have never seen or treated, like gauchets and pompes, um, muscular dystrophy, cystic fibrosis. You know, I got 7,000 to pick from, so there's quite a lot. Um, to some things you might not expect, things where the population is zero, like agents of bioterrorism, which uh, haven't, you know, fortunately the population is still fewer than 200,000 Americans, which is the rule for uh, where we make the cutoff for a rare disease. Um, other things that you might not expect are diseases that are common in the rest of the world but are rare among Americans, like malaria, schistosomiasis, um, all those tropical wormy diseases. Um, so there's, there's a large range of different diseases that are that are rare. So in many ways, your office meets the public health responsibility of the FDA by being a lifeline for folks who are in desperate need. That's right. And some of the, uh, some of the things that have, those lifelines that have been thrown have actually resulted in some major miracles. What are some of the frustrations in your job? Well, it's the government. Uh, the government always has frustrations, as you, you well know. You work for the government. Um, you know, the, the big, our organization is actually growing. It's expanding very rapidly, but not rapidly enough. If there were a frustration, I told you we have 350 um, new therapies for people with rare diseases, but I told you we have 7,000 rare diseases, so we're scratching the surface right now. Things can't expand fast enough for the people who really need them. So that's the, the major single most important thing is that we have to hurry because people have children who need therapies right now. What are some of the things about your office that you think the public doesn't know about and should? Well, when you think rare diseases, uh, you should know that there is a place, a home for them at the FDA. Uh, we work as an ombudsman for patients, patient groups, industry, everybody. It's a concerted effort. It's getting big now. Um, you know, we actually rep about a third of all of the new therapies that FDA approves now are orphan products. Um, so we've come a long way from those days when Abby set up uh, uh, the Orphan Drug Act and, and, and things have, have gone forward tremendously. We're expecting a lot as personalized medicine goes forward. We are very human, <laughs> okay? People come to us and, and they're a little, the, uh, FDA suffers from a little bit of an opacity problem. Uh, it's sort of a black box. People don't know what goes on inside there. And um, our criteria, the ways that we, we work and that we handle uh, things according to regulations are pretty straightforward, uh, pretty simple. Um, for example, an or a good orphan status designation application could be done in about 
eight or nine pages. And I have received applications that sit in volumes that are taller than you are. So um, those are the kinds of problems. People are, are a little bit, they don't know what to expect of the FDA, but it's mostly just people helping Americans. And uh, while, while you're a lifeline to patients, you're also uh, a prop for industry as well, because uh, uh, industry would like to make these products as well, and you give them a way to do it. The truth is that the FDA doesn't make drugs. We don't make miracles. Miracles are being made, and we're overseeing their safety and their efficacy, and that they're appropriate for populations. But we ourselves don't actually make drugs. We're, we're regulators. So, um, yeah, they are an important, a very important part of the, pro uh, of, of, of the process. And um, so we need to see, our mission is to serve the American people, and industry is a tool through which we do that. Dr. Cote, I noticed that you're wearing a uniform. Uh, what's that all about? Sure, uh, this uniform is the uniform of the U.S. Public Health Service. The Public Health Service has existed for a long time. It goes back to 1798, and we, um, we are the nation's response to public health needs. The nation has always needed to have doctors to send into outbreaks and epidemics and doctors to send to Katrina and, and other emergencies. Uh, these days, most of us work at different agencies, at FDA, CDC, NIH, uh, and at those agencies, there are people in uniform and outside of uniform. 